Hi everyone, this is Brother Bryce, and here at eLearning Brothers, we have a variety of what we call conversational scenarios, which could simulate any type of office conversation. You can insert any of these PowerPoint conversations scenarios. So I'll show you them right here. Power, all these PowerPoint scenarios can in, be inserted into any one of your PowerPoint courses. And with using iSpring alongside with it, you can also take that to the next level. So I'm going to show you how to iSpringify your eLearning Brothers scenario templates and uh, help with branching and keeping that consistent with, with the iSpring next and back buttons. Okay. So first what you want to do is uh, you want to pick out which template you want. You can go through these templates and see a quick overview of each one. Okay. And then when, when you figure out the one that you want, you pick you you download the either the PPTX or the PPT. And I'm gonna download the PPTX here. So let's just set this on my desktop. Once it downloads, all you need to do is open it up into PowerPoint. And when you have that opened. Let's go ahead and enable some things here and get me access to enable all of these or edit the text. So once we have it open, uh, you want to locate the iSpring tab. Move to the iSpring tab and press the presenter ex presentation explorer. When you have that open, this gives you a variety of different things that you can do. So uh, first of all, um, what, what you want to figure out is which slides go with which. So, um, so in this interaction, we have uh, two people having a conversation. And within that, you have uh, two options. So this is kind of an interaction, interactive uh, conversation as well. So uh, the user will then pick one of the two options. And whether they pick option one or option two, it will go to either one of these two slides. And so, uh, so yeah, once you figure that out, you can, uh, you can then go through and, and nest each one of the slides under the appropriate slide here. So, for instance, uh, these two slides go alongside with, side with this slide here, this first one. So I would uh, demote this one and this one and make it underneath that one question. Okay. So these two slides again are, are the response from, from this question here on this slide. So I'll go ahead and minimize that for now. And, uh, and then going, going forward, we got another question and these two responses will be, uh, in conjunction with this slide. So I'll nest those two underneath that one. And then same thing goes here. We have two more and I'll minimize that. Okay. So once we have it nested, this just helps us in organizing uh, the the slides and helping helping figure out which slides go go with which. And you will see this later on, and when you publish out the course, you will see how it um, will help the user as well. So uh, so when we have that, let's go ahead now and label the slides. So I'll just sit, call this question question. I know how to spell. I, I promise you. Question one. And question two, let's put a space there, and question three. three. I know how to spell, don't worry. There you got it. There we go. And so, um, so once you have that, uh, then it goes, uh, once we have these labeled, it helps us out and just figuring out which ones are which, right? Now we want to set out the branchings. Okay, so with these questions, what I think would be best is just to have uh, the option to go backwards. However, for this first slide, since there is nothing behind there, um, uh, you don't need a backwards. So I'm going to go ahead and put none on both the next going forward and going backwards on the branching. Okay. And then for this one, I don't want to go forward because, again, let me just uh, reiterate what I was saying. Uh, because 
we have the navigation here on the slide. So I don't want them to press the next button and go forward. I want them to, to go forward by pressing one of these two buttons here, okay? And so the backwards will go to the next, the previous question, question one, and the forwards will go nowhere for now. Okay. This one, same type of deal, going forwards. Let's do none, especially since there's nowhere to go after that. And then uh, previous will go to uh, slide four, question two. All right, now let's open up inside each one of these. Now what we'd wanna do is, um, have the next slide. So if I press next, I want to go to slide four, question two, because I would I, if I, I if I'm on this slide here, I shouldn't be seeing this slide. If this is making sense. So um, so when I go to here, I want to go to four on my next. So question two, and my previous will go to question one. Okay. And for this one, same type of deal. Previous slide will be question one. My next slide will be question two. Okay. And then again in here, uh, forward would be question three. Backwards would be question two. Okay. Repeating the same type of thing. Forwards question three. Backwards question two. And I'll show you how this works once we publish this. Okay, backwards again. Uh, question three. Four, oops, forward, excuse me. Forward, none, because there's nothing after this. And backwards, question three. Okay. Forwards, none. Backwards, question three, or slide seven. Okay, once we have that, now it's, um, did I mess something up here? No, no, I got it right. Okay, so so now that we have this, it uh, will help us out in, in keeping the same um, functionality or the right type of functionality that uh, the iSpring offers, which will make it really nice for the user. So when we save and close this, we now can go to preview and preview all slides. So this is what we'll see after being published. And so now since we nested these slides underneath this question, it will show the user say, hey, you, these questions or these slides are associated with this one question one, which, uh, which just helps out in, uh, again, understanding where you're at in the course and what is doing what, right? So, so now when we're on this question, it then gives us a, a, a scenario and asks us a question and then the user gets to respond to either option one or option two. So if I select option one, I'll go to uh, the remediation of that question one or, or option one. And then if I hit previous, it'll go back to the, the question and I can choose again a different answer, option two maybe. And then, um, and then when I press next, it will go to the next question. Now here again, um, we don't want them to be able to press next because we have the uh, navigation here on the screen. So um, so instead of pressing next, we can go previous and it will go back to our question one and we can re uh, go through, the user can go again through that question and, and um, see what it had to say, right? So then again, uh, all right, option one, press next. We go to op question two. Uh, then uh, this time I want question one again. Hit next. It goes to the last question. Um, and then I say option one. And that is the remediation for option one of question three. So, uh, so if you can see, uh, this makes it really nice for the user to be able to uh, have the branching set out for them and and get a good structure of what the course looks like and why it does what it does. So so that's a, a quick tutorial on how to iSpringify your eLearning Brothers template scenarios and uh, make uh, awesome branching within your PowerPoint uh, course. Thanks again, and we'll talk to you soon.